All right, so today I want to go over the uh, next text one. Um, this one is could be a very simple assignment. It depends on how far you want to take it, what other things you want to add to it. Um, the purpose of this one is to see how we can uh, take a piece of text and use a write effect to create the text as it's like being written. Um, sometimes you'll see this if you have a portfolio, you want to introduce yourself. Sometimes people use a signature. If you've ever seen like the Walt Disney opening, they use the write-on effect to write out the Walt Disney stuff. Um, so it can start in Illustrator. Um, I'm going to go to After Effects first to see how we can do some stuff in there, and then we'll come back and see how the Illustrator route would work. So um, inside of Illustrator here, or in After Effects, here's one way that we could have this write-on effect write stuff on. Okay, so it's very simple. I literally threw this together in about five minutes when I sat down, opened my computer, and made that. And then there's also another way we can have it work, which is this way. Uh, ignore. There we go. Okay, so this is just another way to do it. Um, <clears throat> There's two basic plugins that, in order for this to work, we would utilize. One of them is the write on effect. Okay, so under effect, under uh, generate, there is a write on effect. The other one is a trap code plugin, which is called 3D Stroke. The write on effect is very simple, it can do this kind of stuff, but there's a lot of manual work that has to go into it in order for it to do what it does. And if we wanted to update something, uh, there's a lot of work that we have to do to redo it. The 3D Stroke one has a lot of options for tweaking and modifying what we want it to look like. Just by adjusting some sliders, we can really control the end result of it. Okay. So I um, don't need to make a new comp. You know how to make a comp, so I, I'm just going to make a new solid. I'll give this a color. That works. And then if I wanted to start off just like do it right in After Effects, I would grab my pen tool and I would write the word that I want to write, okay? Just like a cursive type thing uh, or however. The direction that I write this in is the direction that it will then stroke it in. So I wouldn't like write the, if I'm writing Sean, I wouldn't write the U before I write the S, right? And how I would write it in paper is how I would write it here. So I would go like this, I would go like this. And then if I need to tweak something, I could come down, obviously, and modify what the handlebars are doing. There we go. And then I can click off. And then uh, start writing my H. So I'll go here, there. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have to be in cursive, but just obviously this makes it easier because then I'm only dealing with, in this case, only two paths. The more paths you have, the more complicated this process gets. Okay, um, so uh, just put show for now. Perfect. All right, show. <laughs> uh, so to get the right on effect to work, I make a brand new solid. I go to my effect. I go to generate. I go to write on, and then the way that this plugin works is that I'm able to take this brush position and animate it. Okay. So if I were to click a keyframe here and I scoot it up a little bit and moved this over, you would see how this writes on just like that. Okay. And then if I were to go up further, then move it, then you'll see again how it writes like that. The way that we're going to use this or we can use this is if I go to this original one, I open up my mask, I click on the mask path and I copy it. Then when I go to here and I click on the brush position to set keyframes, I can paste that path, okay? So the points that I clicked in there, After Effects will convert into actual points that it'll use for keyframes. So now when I hit play, you'll see how it writes that on, okay? So obviously it comes out dotted. That's something that you could use as a, an effect if you had a specific reason for having it dotted. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I can play with the brush size, 
right? So if I make it obviously thick enough, it covers up the dots. Um, or if I want it this thin, I would then play with my brush spacing to make the brushes closer together, okay? So it's essentially dots at every frame. So if the dots are close enough, it looks like a stroke. So now I hit play, oops, and there we go. Now to get the second letter to write on, or the second part of this, I go down to my mask, I copy the second path, I go back to my brush position, and then I would paste that brush position right after it. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna paste that information right on top of it. So now I would go rewind this and hit play, and I would go Well, yeah, the, you don't want to have supercalifragilistic da da da. You know, you want to have something that is uh, pretty discernible at that quality. Okay. Now, notice here, I didn't connect the a S and the H, but because of the write-on effect, it automatically connects those two things. Okay. It basically there's an end key point, keyframe and a start keyframe for the two uh, paths, and it just transitions between them. So that could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, it depends on um, how you want to look at it. Uh, when I did this one, I'm gonna delete these keyframes down here. That's what it looked like. So you see how it connected the S here and then went straight across and down for the H. So it looks kind of odd how that one laid out, okay? All right, now we can play with some of these other options. Um, obviously we can play with the uh, brush size. I don't know why brush size is, oops, that's the wrong one. There it is. We can play with the brush size here. We can play with the brush hardness. Okay, so it's a little bit softer around the edges if you look at it closer. You can see how they're softer or harder. Obviously the opacity is gonna change that. Um, stroke length we don't need to worry about. And then these ones on the bottom, this is where you can customize it a little bit. <clears throat> if I go to my paint time properties and I choose, let's say, uh, color, if I rewind this to the beginning and I set a keyframe on color, I scooch up a bit. So that's the end of my animation right there. And then I pick a different color. So we'll go with that. So now it's gonna animate the color going from white obviously to blue. Yeah. Okay, so very easily we can do that. Now, if I change this to opacity, you'll see that no longer is the color being animated. I have to specify if I want the color or opacity to be able to animate, or I set this to none if I don't want either of them, okay? So what would happen now is it'll basically transition the entire thing and not animating the stroke as it's going. Okay, so just be aware of how that works. These brush time properties work the same way. So I can adjust the size as it's writing or the hardness or the size and the hardness. I'm not sure why they don't have an opacity and color up here, but whatever. And then this paint style is on original image. You'll see this a lot in After Effects. Whenever you do an effect, do you want it on the original solid that you created or do you want it just to be transparent and then you can move it wherever you want? So right now I created a pink background, a pink solid. I could say, do this on a transparent. And now it's transparent. So now I just have the stroke. And if I move this around, let me turn my other one on so you can see it. That's not, there it is. If I move this around, you'll see it obviously has transparency. So if I had like a brick wall I wanted my name to be written on, I could just put this on a brick wall. All right, so that's how write-on works. Very simple, there's only a few buttons. Um, the way that I was able to get this transition not to be here is I keyframed the brush size as it goes from here to there. So if I look at my keyframes, you'll see there's that brush size way down here, lots of keyframes, so that we don't see it. Okay, you can barely see it, kind of, sort of. All right, so that's right on. Simple, it comes with your After Effects, no problem. Uh, the other one, which is um, 3D Stroke, let me make, uh, I'll actually just use this same medium red solid here. You need a stroke on there, you need a mask. <clears throat> That's what it uses. I go to Effect, I go to Trap Code, and I go to Stroke. 
There we go. And what this will do by default is it'll automatically recognize you have paths and then it'll allow you to animate this right on top of it. So just like we would use the trim path, so we have a start and end point, same thing. I go to the start point here, or sorry, the end point there, and as I drag it, you can see how it automatically just writes it. Now, because I have two paths in this list, it wants to do both paths at the same time. Um, so I'm going to say don't use all paths, just use path, path number one. I'm going to rewind this to the beginning. I'm going to set an end keyframe. Scooch up a little bit, put that at 100. There we go. Okay, so very quickly it just wrote it on. Now this is where the benefit of this comes in because if I decided I wanted to change my path at any point, I change it and those keyframes automatically update or the, the path automatically updates. I don't have to worry about recopying and pasting stuff. If I used write on and I updated this path, I would have to then copy the path again paste it back on right on and then redo that whole process over again. Okay, so now that'll all update. Perfect. All right. Now, if I want two strokes like we do here, um, I could copy this layer so I could duplicate that layer and I would have a second layer and then I could go and add, uh, just change this to mask number two. Or what I can do is duplicate this effect. So if I just duplicate the effect, so now, let me just shrink this down. Now I have stroke here and stroke there. And what I'm going to do is on the um, second one, I'm just going to pick mask path two. And now all my keyframes are still set from before. I hit play and I get that. Now, just like I showed in the right on effect, um, it has that thing. Do you want to display it on the original image or on a transparent image? Or how do you want to mix this in? So on the bottom of the second one, I have to tell it the transfer mode. They'll call it different things based on whichever plugin or tool you're using, but it's essentially the same thing. So in this case, how do I want to have the new stroke, the new plugin, uh, interact with the old stuff? So if I just set this to normal, you'll see how it just drops it back on there. So now that's right on top of it. Um, so now when I rewind this in play, same effect that we had before, right? So it's writing both at the same time, but if I hit U to get to my keyframes, I can offset the H so it starts after the S. Oops, and maybe scooch it back a little bit. And again, another time where we probably don't want to have easy ease on this would be here. There's no point to kind of slow down. Like nobody slows down as they get to the end of their thing. Usually they speed up because they want to go a little bit faster, right? So you could do a little speed at the end, but not really necessary for the easy ease part. Cool. Now, we have the basic setup done. So with this, I can go through and I can do things like um, take the thickness and keyframe it as a whole, just like we did before. Um, or what I can do is go down to taper, enable this, and it'll automatically, based on how it's writing, create that. So I'm going to put taper on for both of these. Come on. Okay, so as the stroke gets written, it's kind of like doing this neat effect with how it works. Um, I can play with, put that there. I can play with the start thickness and the end thickness. So now the start of this is going to be at a certain thickness. The end of this will be at a different thickness. I don't have to worry about keyframing all the stuff that I would typically inside of uh, the other one. Um, I can do things like, uh, transform this so I can bend the text around. Okay, now, obviously not a purpose for this, but let's say that I wrote the word earth and I wanted the word earth to be like written around the earth. I could bend it so that it would look like it's wrapped around the earth. Um, I can also take the Z position of this and move it forward or back in the Z so it's getting closer to us or further away from us. And obviously these could all be animated. Um, I can also use a repeater, and in this case, it's not a, like I don't necessarily need it, uh, but a repeater will basically just repeat that stroke. Okay, now we're using this for text, but this can also be used for just general strokes. Instead of us using the, right, the um, trim path one, which is basically start and end, and then it does its thing, 
we could use this as a way to kind of just create some nice little strokes that would like outline our stuff. So that's where the repeater would come in. Um, it may seem silly, like it says instances two, and there's obviously more than two here, there's five, uh, but it's doing a symmetric doubler. So I'm gonna turn that off. <clears throat> and then instances two means there's two copies on top of the original. So if I set this to zero, there's the original, I set it to two, there's two extra ones. Now, a neat effect for this kind of thing is if I were to take the um, Z displace down, oops, down, and maybe take the X displace, um, maybe two, maybe three, that works good. Okay, now what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me a little bit more thickness on the H and the O. Okay, the S, just pretend I'm doing the same thing to it. Um, then I can take my opacity down. So let's say I have to go 80% or 50% or even more, let's say 20. There we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting this harder edge on the left side and the softer edge on the right side. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do with um, 3D stroke that is just like amazing type of stuff, okay? So now where would Illustrator fit into the mix? <clears throat> Let's say that we have a specific piece of text that we wanted to write that wasn't just a basic stroke. We wanna do something fancier. Uh, let's say I wanted to use the word Sean. Again, uh, short words, nothing crazy long. Uh, let's say that I had for whatever reason I chose this, that's what I wanted to write, okay? Um, let's not do that one. I'm, that's exactly why I downloaded it. <laughs> uh, that one's ugly, I need something more scripty. All right, there we go, something fancier. And obviously capitals don't work in that case, that's good, there we go. All right, so, um, I don't care for how they did the S, but just ignore that for now. Yeah, uh, yellow, there we go. Yellow is a perfect word. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's say we wanted this piece of text to be written on, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of text and I'm just gonna save it and bring that into uh, my software. So this will be Jello. It's all in one layer, so that's fine. It, it can be for, for now. I will adjust it later once you see why we're gonna adjust it. So I'm just gonna import it straight up and then drop this into my composition. Okay, so I want this Jello word to be written on. So I'm gonna go to um, a new solid. I'm going to make this uh, just an add, nope, screen. All right, fine. I'll just put Jello above it. I just need to see the word Jello so that as I use this layer, I can still see it. So I'm going to go to my pen tool and I'm going to outline this the way it should be written. So I think if I'm writing this, I would start here. I would go there. Right. But the stroke won't give us the ability to um, uh, to draw it like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same thing we did before, which is like a track mask for like a reveal. So if you wanted to reveal a piece of text, uh, this is how we would do that. Okay, um, so that works perfect there. Um, I don't need to worry about um, overlapping things, so I'm just gonna draw my next point right here and then go into where I would draw the E. somehow I get down here for that. All right, good enough. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, um, doesn't matter, right on or stroke effect. I just need to get a stroke. I need to get something on here, okay? 
So just because most of you don't have the write on effect or the stroke effect at home, like I said, you can download it and use it um, and just render it here. I'm just going to copy the path and then I'm going to go to a new solid. And then I'm going to go to the write on effect. Rewind this to the beginning, go to my brush position and then paste that. Oops. There it is, jello. Okay, I make my brush size bigger, make the uh, spacing smaller. There we go. Now what I need it to do is I need it to cover the entire word. So I'm gonna drop this on top of jello, take this to transparent, and just make sure that my stroke is thick enough to cover the entire thing. There we go. Cool. Good enough. Uh, I could adjust, obviously, that point, but for now it's good enough. Okay. So uh, I'm going to take the word jello, leave that underneath, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use the above layer as a reveal. So I'm going to say use that as an alpha mat. So now when I rewind this, you can see how it then looks like it's kind of writing it on. All it's doing is revealing it, but that's what it's doing. Now you'll see some obvious issues with this. Right here, I'm seeing parts of both sides of that letter. Um, as I come this way and I go here, I can, obviously I can see parts of both sides of that. Same thing here when it crosses, I can see both sides of that. Same thing there, I see part of the E. There's another part of the E as it goes across, and so on. Okay. So the way the reveal is working is this layer up here is just so thick that it's covering up big chunks of it. And what I need it to do is be thin in some areas and thicker in some areas and so on in order for it to match completely how this is being written. Especially when it comes here, it needs to basically fit perfectly what that is doing. Okay? So in this case, what I would have to do if I wanted a fancy word like jello is I would have to um, go to my text type, there it is, create outlines, there it is. And then I would have to start breaking this up into pieces. So you'll see how, oops, the E looked like he was separated, there he is. Uh, so the E is on a separate piece. So I would put the E on its own layer. I would put this letter on its own layer. I would have put this letter on its own layer, this letter on its own layer. Whoops. On the J area, or any areas where I have this kind of crossing thing, um, I may have several layers just so I can create this nice and neat. So I'm not going to do the whole After Effects process for it, but just so you can see how I would do it. I'm going to um, copy this, paste it, put on another layer. Copy it again, paste it, put on another layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into several pieces. So um, I know that up here, this is where I was having an issue. This is where as one stroke was coming in, I was seeing basically like these two parts. So I would go into this. I would go into, let's say, um, actually, let me just use a pen tool. Why aren't you picking? So I have that stroke right there. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it onto the one below it because I need to use that as a way to cut this layer. So if I use Shift M, it allows me to just pick that shape and it'll automatically cut that shape right there. Okay. Then on this layer, this layer only, I could then delete the rest of that. And I could obviously delete that. Okay, then I'll go to layer three. There's that shape again. I'm gonna need another one. Uh, let me make sure that this is not, I just need a stroke on there. There we go. And make this smaller. Okay. I'm also gonna need a stroke down here so that it doesn't show the edge of this and the edge of that. Those will be a separate piece that I would then use, uh, create inside After Effects. So I'll just use my line tool there. 
and then use another line tool right there. And then I'm copying these to the other layer so that they line up perfectly. They're not like overlapping. I use shift M again. Oops. I guess they do have to be on fills. All right, I'll make them fills. Should be going all the way across. Yes, you are. No. Come on. All right, I'm just going to use the cutter. I'll just use that. I'm going to cut it right at that point, cut it right at this point. Cut this right there, cut this right there. OK, then I can go through and do the same thing up here. That won't work before. Let me see if that will work again. Yep, there it goes. Cool. All right, so now I can delete that little line. <clears throat> I can delete. Um, Come on, cut there, yes. Good. And then the same thing here, I would have to cut. I don't know why I didn't cut first time. That's fine that it did that, because I'm just going to sew it up anyway. There we go. So once this is cut, you can obviously see this is a more complicated path or uh, way that we're doing this. All right, that's why we have a backup. That one's just screwed up. Let me just copy this one. There we go. So I'm going to copy this layer again and try that again. All right, just cut here. Yes, just cut there. I think it's because I had my other layer on still. There we go. All right, it's not playing nice. It should just cut right there. It doesn't like me. <laughs> I have scissors. Yes. There we go. So now they cut. All right. I'm going to delete these lines here because I'm just going to use. And then I'm going to have to cut this down here. Maybe that's what I forgot to do, and cut it down here also. Come on. Yes. 
Yes. When the points are just on top of each other, <clears throat> I keep connecting them, so. Delete that again. Nope, not that. Yes. All right. I'm going to cut it a little bit in, and then I'll just adjust it from there. Cut here. Cut there. Then I'm just going to sew this up, and I'll sew this up. There we go. And then I can just subtract these points. There we go. And then I can take these and move those back in there. So they were just on top of each other, so I was obviously uh, not liking it. So I'd do the same thing on this side. So I would cut it off the path, apparently. Usually I'm able to do it without having to cut it off the path, but not today. Then I need to connect these back up. There we go. And then it obviously helps if you have another shape underneath it that you can make sure it's lined up perfectly exactly where you want it. Okay. There we go. All right, so that gives me this piece as a separate one. That's cut there. I'm gonna also cut it down here somewhere. Where is it connecting it? Way up at the top? Yes. So let me sew this back together up here, and that will help stop sewing it back together down there. There we go. Okay. So now this is separate pieces. So there's a piece. There's a piece and there's a piece, okay? So I would take all these pieces, put them on separate layers, and then each one of these would have their own right on reveal effect to get that to work, okay? Um, it all depends on, again, how detailed you wanna go as to um, exactly where you put all the pieces and how you want to lay this out, okay? Um, the word you choose will kind of dictate how that's all set up. Writing it inside here is easier to do. You could also write it inside Illustrator as long as you're bringing in the path. Mm. Right, you can use block fonts too, it's just you'll have a lot more paths. There we go. I'm just gonna change my name to show, it's a lot easier. Uh, let me delete this one, I don't need that. Show this one. like that one. All right. So I'm going to take this uh, 3D stroke one here and I'm going to get rid of that um, repeater. And this is just an extra thing that, you know, on top of, of the basic stuff of what you can do with this kind of effect. So I'm going to go to this, oops, move it to like the middle. If I take this layer and I pre-compose it, this is the first time we'll get this, where it'll ask us, um, do you want to leave all your attributes in the current comp, or do you want to move all the attributes? When you have things like masks and effects, um, it wants to let you know, give you the option, do you want to keep all those effects here so you can still edit them, or do you want to pre-compose everything and move that over? In this case, I want to move everything, and I'm just going to say show is the name there. 
<clears throat> okay, so I get a pre-composed font. Okay, so there's nothing fancy here. This doesn't update. If I go to my effects, I go to color correction, I go to hue and saturation. I'm going to colorize it. I'm going to darken it. I'm going to saturate it. <clears throat> now I've changed the color of this. So obviously very easily I could change the color of what I wrote. Now here's where we can take what we've already done and use that as well. If I duplicate this, and I'm just going to change the hue, so let's say uh, 40. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'll go to 80. Duplicate this again. Go to 120. And then I'll duplicate it one more time and go to 160. Uh, 200. That looks good. Okay. So now I'm going to get blue, right? Uh, but each one of these layers is a different color. So if I were to rewind this, offset this one by like two frames, this one by two frames, this one by two frames, and this one by two frames. Hopefully you can kind of imagine already what's going to happen. Right? And then if we got rid of, I'm going to go back to this and get rid of that um, taper that we have on it. I don't want that taper and I don't want that taper. Right? So have you ever seen the Google logo write itself? That's the Google logo writing itself. And then obviously we would want things like motion blur on this. That way as it's writing itself, we're getting a little bit of blurriness on there. Right? And then we would go through and do all the other stuff, which is um, adding in the um, background, adding in maybe a vignette, adding in some color corrections, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Okay, so that'll wrap you up for the last piece of our text. So by the time you're done with this, um, you should have one piece of text that is hand animated all the pieces moving in. You have one that you've used the animator on, so it's automated. And then you have one that's written on. Okay, so that could be a cursive piece of text. You can do it individually. It's just going to have more layers is all. Um, all right, so any questions on this specific thing? Yes, ma'am. You have one that you're going to hand animate. <clears throat> Let me save this one so I have it. So like the one I showed with the box, the, um, not that one. Yep, this one. So this one, all the pieces are hand animated. I animated each word, each piece of the word manually. Same thing with the swamp one that's all hand animated. Each letter or word is in the exact spot because I manually keyframed each one. <clears throat> then you have this one which is using the animator. The same thing with this one is again using the animator, just simpler. And then you have the one we went over today, which is having it right on. Okay, any other questions on that? Mm-hmm. The only reason I made the pre-comp was because I wanted to take all of this and just squish it into one layer. Under comp uh, layer, we go to pre-compose, so or control shift C. And that will just bunch it up so that everything is just a flattened out version of it. Yes, sir. All of that's going to be under your effects controls. So once you add an effect to this, that effect should come up. So on this, once I've added the write-on effect or the stroke, <clears throat> the stroke would then show up in my effects controls. And like I said, you can download that trap code one, use it, it's, it's a full version, you'll use it, you can use it home, you'll just get a red X on it while you're working. When you want to finally render it out, you bring it here, 
it'll recognize you have trap code, it'll use our license, and then you can render it out without the edX, red X. Okay, any other questions on this? Sir? Uh, is mon uh, Monday gonna be a work day before we uh, turn them in, or is this the last work day for everything? No, Monday will be a work day for this. Um, I will show how to put everything together Monday, so that'll be a quick demo. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the day will be a work day. And then Wednesday, we'll start the actual um, next assignment, which I'm going to go over after we're done with this. What was the video with this thing? Uh, 15 minutes after I'm done. <laughs> cool. Any other questions?